So now we'll continue our conversation. We'll talk about writing as a Baroque art. Yes. Um, I have to back up from, from it at the beginning, and then as I talk about it, I will rename it again, the Baroque art, because um, the art of writing, the art of writing is based on a writer evolving in his or her character. So because of the horsemanship as an art, influenced very strongly the development of virtues in humans, the, uh, the elite, the historical elite of the nobles and the wealthy and the ruling classes, uh, because th there were really uh, only the two classes of uh, ruling classes who were also the defense and the food producing classes, call it whatever, but they, uh, but that's what it was. And to educate a human to join into the ruling classes of humanity was done on horseback because horses don't teach like teachers, like monks and nuns would teach in a school and say, be good and be courageous or any of, but horses make you become courageous, make you be tolerant, make you be patient. They don't talk about it as a concept. They induce it in the character. So the riding art elevated the young uh, humanity to in the development of virtues in character that made them effective rulers and kind and beneficial rulers because if you can uh, practice these character virtues with an animal they become internalized so they don't become oh be, be just and be empathetic and uh, no it's not somebody shaking a finger at you you ride six hours a day and by the end of it you are pretty empathetic and you are pretty courageous and you are pretty, in other words, it's internalized. You live it on a horseback. So while the horse is ennobling his rider, the rider is allowed access to the horse to tame him and groom him. And I don't mean groom him, brush and whatever, but uh, uh, groom a piece of random, unique na nature into a conceptual ideal alteration of that nature by taming and grooming. So this is where we arrive at the Baroque ideology. It was the age of reason. It was the age of rationality. Unfortunately, we are leaving it in leaps <laughs> and bounds under the prompting of thug, thugs, uncultured base thugs. However, the Baroque idea was before these thugs emerged and, and the philosophy was that man is a, a creature, the only creature we know that can conceptualize and understand. In other words, Animals can know, like humans know on a primitive level. If I touch that, it's hot. I, I withdraw or I leap away from it. Or if something runs at me, it's trying to eat me, it's not a friend coming. So, so there, there is this uh, rampant uh, nature understanding, but nobody can analyze it, synthesize it, and, uh, and come to understand it, and understand the nature of a shrub or the nature of a tree, and with it the function of it, and why it's important, and to whom. And when understanding is applied 
to benefit another creature, whether it's a shrub or a horse or a dog or a giraffe, then it's called wisdom. So the age of rational age of Baroque encouraged the understanding of the duty of life is to address random nature and refine it and elevate it until it's more useful to others. So when we have corn that yields six times more per acre than it did before, you got random nature and you ennobled it. You groomed it, you tamed it, you synthesized it, you analyzed it, you made it to be useful to the millions of people who used to be hungry but now are well fed. And that is a Baroque idea. Of course, we are against it. We demonstrate on the street, down with the corn or whatever. <laughs> it's, you know, insanity rampant with little loudspeakers and placards displayed in the public. Now then back to Baroque where they didn't take pride in themselves being uh, irrational, but they decided that a, a, a horse, which is a treasure by nature, can be by taming and grooming and improving his gymnastic evolution from just restoration and therapy to finally athletic art. So a horse is not just groomed to stay a piece of nature, but to improve his physical movement because he's a moving machine. He is an animal of flight and that's why we needed him. We wanted to take flight too, wanted to move with a stronger, faster partner. But we could ennoble his movement so that with less effort he can maximize his flotation and transportation over land. So we found nature on the range, we tamed it, but we also tamed it to improve his natural gates to the maximum and create an edifice of art from humble, unique nature. This edifice of art is more comfortable in his new emergent being than he would be left on the range, ill-fed, unfed, exposed to predators, when you can give him shelter, grooming, proper diet and medical care while you elevate him at the very things nature made him do, but he, lacking man's ability to analyze, synthesize and understand, he being a primitive creature of nature, would have never self-elevated. And this is why in the Baroque, in the age of reason, they also were very religious because they said uh, the religious teaching is that man is created in God's image. They meant God is the only one that can create from something, from nothing something, and when God creates the something, then human can create from the something something. And in that, he is the likeness of God. Because turtles cannot do that, goldfish cannot do that, pine trees cannot do that, dogs cannot do it, mosquitoes cannot do it, humans can. Ergo, they are a little bit like God. And so the age of reason was also an age of rationally understanding religious depth or fervor and by that be able to raise a simple cow into a beef cattle and a simple cow that can end up giving 
22 liters of milk instead of four liters a day, etc., etc., because nature was groomed, forests gave places to food crops and parks and other things. Again, nature with the rationality of man's understanding is now deployed to the benefit of others. Therefore, it goes from understanding to wisdom and a life of a wise mankind. And so the unity of horse and noble and comforted in stables with food and medical care and grooming is elevated to a height he could never reach by himself. But in the payback, he elevates the human from a nasty little disgusting 11-year-old creep into a gorgeous ruler sitting on a throne who benefits the nation he rules. And this is the Baroque uh, view of the great art of writing and this was the age in which the last refinements and the last really profound understandings in the training of horses was revealed. And after that, the only advances were in jumping uh, and uh, never anymore uh, in training of the horse's natural abilities. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, conversation will be more talking about the technical aspects of writing.